How to instantly attain enlightenment? When you ask, what is the Buddha? What is enlightenment? I simply hold up this pen. There's actually a tremendous meaning in this answer, but that will be explained later. First and foremost, you need to look at this pen while suspending judgment. Simply look. Don't make any judgments. Then the reality of your situation reveals itself. The surprising part is that through this pen, you can gain understanding of both this pen and yourself. The entire universe blossoms together the moment you mindfully look at this pen. The spot from which you mindfully observe this pen is your true self. No other place explains it this kindly. People do this for decades just to understand this one thing. If someone even gets close to understanding this after decades of trying, they make a huge fuss about it, saying they've attained the way. Why? Because others are even more clueless. You can't compare yourself to others. Instead of making relative comparisons, just look at this pen mindfully. When you look at this pen mindfully, immersively, awake, then your inner pure fundamental root emerges. When you look with suspended judgment, your thoughts, feelings, and five senses become quieter and your true self becomes stronger. So finding your true self is incredible on its own. While looking at this one thing, your mind becomes peaceful and you realize, there is a pure self within me that is aware. In a state of suspended judgment, before thoughts, feelings, and five senses exist, I exist. If you know this far, then you have realized truth of self. But going further, if you understand why I held up this pen, then you have also realized truth of existence. Why did he hold up that pen? Why did he say that pen is the Buddha? Well, what needs to exist for this pen to be registered in your universe as an object? The self that is aware. You need to exist for a beginning to exist. For this pen to exist, what needs to exist? This pen appeared within your mind, right? The moment I raised this pen, all of the sudden, this pen appeared in your universe. Who created this pen? Since it's a function of your mind, who other than yourself could have made this pen? Your true self created this pen. When I show this pen in response to, what is the Buddha? I'm showing you a function of the true self. I'm holding up this pen implying that your true self created this pen within your universe. This isn't just a regular pen. It's a function of your true self. If you can understand this, you have understood truth of existence. Even with the same koan, the depth of the realization depends on the person's spiritual level. That's why Zen master Gute only raised his finger whenever he was asked a question about Zen. This finger seems like my finger, right? No, this finger is an appearance within your universe. Your true self made this finger appear within your mind. You realize your true self when you look with suspended judgment, but moreover, for someone with a high spiritual level, they also realize that that finger is the function of my true self. With a non-dual awake perspective, you can understand this far. You're able to understand it because you have experienced it. What are you experiencing? I'm telling you, you're not just simply looking at a finger. In reality, you're seeing the entire universe. Why? Everything you're seeing and hearing is the same as this finger. It's all created by your true self. Right now, everything that's appearing within your mind was all created by your true self. By putting the emphasis on the finger instead of just your true self, it's urging you to figure out, how did this finger come to exist within my universe? Without your true self, can this finger exist? This is why other Zen masters commented, he only raised a finger, but the entire universe blossomed. In that person's mind, the entire universe becomes uplifted. This isn't anything special. Just, don't know, return to the center within you, and observe the universe from that spot. Then the sounds you hear, the wind blowing, the blueness of the sky, it all appears as the function of my true self. Why? Because it appeared within my five senses, my universe. If you only approach this conceptually, you might say, yeah sure I guess so. That's not what this means. You need to actually feel this through direct experience. Then, it's a completely different feeling. This universe I'm in will appear differently. Before a vast accumulation of this type of experience, there's no point in talking about complete enlightenment. You're supposed to approach this directly, but instead, people endlessly hold on to a koan, hoping one day it'll work. They might become an expert in immersion, but they have no clue about enlightenment. Even for the koan, what is this? People use a bunch of variations. Reciting it slowly, or in sync with the breath, or whatever. It's all hopeless effort. When I say, what is this? To this pen, I'm questioning, 
What is this pen's essence? What is your identity? Then what is it? It's the function of the true self. Since it's hard to approach it directly like this, instead, you can ask, who is the one looking at this? Who is the one who presented this in my universe? Then you will meet your true self. And when you meet your true self, the identity of this pen also gets revealed. This pen is no longer a regular pen. It's no longer a pen made in a factory that has nothing to do with me. After realization, when I ask, what is this? What does this pen become? The function of my true self. This is the famous tenet in Mahayana Buddhism called, everything is an appearance within the mind, if you haven't realized this, then it's not complete enlightenment. No matter how much you rest within your true self, if your realization is only at the level of truth of self, then you're only an arhat. However, if you can understand what I just said, if you can understand truth of existence, then you become a beginner bodhisattva. Beginner bodhisattva has attained complete enlightenment. The difference between a bodhisattva and an arhat is that a bodhisattva doesn't fight with the relative world anymore. A bodhisattva sees the relative world as the function of their true self. But an arhat keeps fighting with the relative world. So they seek purer places to meditate and fight with their thoughts, feelings, and five senses. Why? They have only realized their true self. They haven't realized the true identity of their five aggregates, their thoughts, feelings, and five senses. Can you understand this? If you can just hear what I'm saying, all the mistakes you've made in your meditation practice will all be corrected. There was a monk who practiced for decades with Sungchul Snim's method. After listening to my lectures, he came to me really dejected, saying, I think you're right. He was regretful of all the time he wasted with the wrong practice. The fact that his understanding became clearer as he watched more of my lectures made him more mad and frustrated. Why didn't I practice like this? Why did I hear of this only now? This problem isn't Sungchul Snim's sole responsibility. Anyone who's a Buddhist or wants enlightenment needs to listen to this. This isn't exclusive to Buddhists either. Even a primary school kid can do this. We once taught this to grade 2 students and when they entered a state of suspended judgment, they saw their true nature, same as anyone else. They directly felt the root of their existence. Since they're more innocent, they're even better at this. It's much harder instructing adults. No matter how much we instruct adults, their mind just keeps on racing. They're busy remembering and matching what we're saying with what they already know. Primary school kids on the other hand? We told them, say don't know to your thoughts and feelings, and they instantly responded, oh. I really don't know. They felt around for their arms because they forgot they even had limbs for a moment. We asked, but you still exist right? They responded, yeah I still exist. What does it feel like? It's bright and shining. Coming back to school the next day, they said, the feeling persisted even at home. If this occurred in a monastery, they'd make a huge deal about it. But since it just occurred in a primary school, people just assume so and move on. So, the situation we're in is that new learners grasp this faster than those who have studied before. It's much harder to instruct people who pride themselves in already understanding Buddhism. Fighting with their pre-existing notions and habits is very tough. The pre-installed program is a complete mess and requires a lot of effort to uninstall it. But people with nothing installed in the first place just need to install the correct program and they're done. This is very important too. So you shouldn't pride yourself and say, I've done this for years. Practicing with a humble attitude is much more effective. Thank you.